Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at accounting error analysis, examining whether the accounting error is counterbalancing or non-counterbalancing. So what did we learn in the prior session about accounting errors? We learned that accounting errors are treated as prior period adjustment and we report them in the current year as an adjustment to beginning retained earning. And this is what we did in the prior session. And remember, if we are showing comparative financial statement, we have to restate, we have to go back and correct the, correct the error in that particular year. So comparative financial statement, for example, X5 and X4 are comparable. We have to go back and fix them if we are showing comparative financial statement. Otherwise, we will compute the error and we dump it into beginning retained earning as we see here. Now, if we if we figure out that there is an error in the current year, that's easy. We just simply fix the current year error. We make an adjustment. Now, what do we mean by counterbalancing errors? Well, counterbalancing errors are error that correct themselves over two periods. So you made an error in one period. You don't do anything. The error itself will correct itself in period two. Therefore, you don't have to do anything in period two as long as you don't made you don't you did not make any additional errors for that particular year. And we're gonna look at a few examples that illustrate the point. But the classic case that we already learned about is inventory. Think about inventory. If one particular year we overstated ending inventory by let's say five thousand dollars. This is in year one. So if we overstated ending inventory by 5,000, what's that gonna do to year one? It's gonna reduce cost of goods sold because they are inversely related by 5,000. That's fine. Now we made an error in year one. When we go to year two, this ending inventory, the, the, the ending inventory, it's gonna go to beginning inventory and beginning inventory will be overstated by 5,000. For year two, because beginning inventory is overstated your cost of goods sold your cost of goods sold will also be overstated by 5000 so notice cost of goods sold over two year period they cancel each other out and basically the error is cancelled out and this is what we mean by counterbalancing error now if the books are already closed and the error is already counterbalanced so you don't have to make any necessary entry. So remember, we talked about year one, year two for this error. So let's assume in year one, we made the error for ending inventory. It becomes beginning inventory. Let's assume in year three, we figure out that there's an error. We don't have to do anything anymore. Why? Because it's already been counterbalanced. If the error is not counterbalanced yet, then we make the entry. Then you can make the entry. That's fine. Now, remember, for comparative purposes, you always have to restate. I know I repeat myself because it's important to keep reminding you for comparative, you restate. You cannot show two years and in one year there are errors and the, that, that you know there are errors. You just have to fix the error in that particular year. So all years are comparatively correct. If the books are not closed, if the error is already counterbalanced, no entry is necessary if it if it fixed itself and you're going to see a few examples i'm going to show you a few examples what does it mean it fix itself you don't have to do anything if the error is not yet counterbalance you make the necessary journal entry to adjust the present balance of retained earning you you'll you'll fix into retained earning so those are counterbalancing errors and we're going to look at a few of them Non-counterbalancing errors, guess what? You already kind of know the definition of it. It doesn't fix itself. So if it doesn't fix itself, what do you have to do? You have fixed it. It doesn't offset in the next accounting period. You must make correcting entries. And we're gonna look at a few examples that illustrate those concepts. Now, before we look at these examples, most likely you are watching because you are either a student or a CPA candidate. And either or, welcome, I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you found me. I'm glad you're watching. Go a step further, farhatlectures.com and subscribe to Farhat Lectures where you have additional resources, lectures, multiple choice, true, false. That's gonna help you in your accounting courses as well as your CPA exam. I don't replace your CPA review course. I'm gonna be a useful addition to your CPA review course. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation like this recording if you're watching it's helping you like it it doesn't cost you anything share it with other connect with me on Instagram Facebook Twitter and reddit so let's take a look at few examples that illustrate those counterbalancing and non counterbalancing errors we have a partial trial balance and 
let's start with supplies. Supplies on hand on December 31st total 1,000. So we did a physical count and we say we have 1,000. We look at the trial balance and it shows 2,900. Well, we have a problem. Why? Not a problem. Well, we have to fix something. You want to call this adjusting entries. You want to call this an error. It doesn't matter. It's the same. So supply shows 2,900. In reality, we should have 1,000. So we need to reduce we need to reduce our supplies account. So when we reduce our supplies account, it means we consume the supplies. It has to be consumed into supplies expense. So we need to reduce our supplies, 1,900, and remove it from supplies. Now supplies is 1,900, and it's the correct amount. This is assuming we find out about this error before the books are closed. If the books are closed and the entry did not and the the the, uh, the error did not counterbalance yet now we need to prepare a journal entry to fix the error what happened is this if we did not so this is the this is what we are looking for if we did not book this entry if we did not fix this error and now it's year two year x2 what do we have to do we have to fix it into retained earning. For one thing, we have to reduce supplies. So if we reduce supplies, we have to still credit supplies 1,900. Now we're not going to debit supplies expense because we cannot fix supplies expense. Supplies expense was closed because now we are looking at X2, year two. So what do we do? We debit retained earnings. By debiting retained earnings, we kind of achieve the same thing that we wanted to achieve, record an expense. So those two, those two are the same, except when you're in year two, when when you when you are in year two, this is X1, this is X2 entry, when you're in year X2, you can no longer and fix that supplies in the prior year. So what you do is you fixed the retained earnings. And by fixing the retained earnings, basically you reduce retained earnings by 1,900. It's the same, it's the same as if you book the expense in year one by 1,900 because by increasing the expense, you reduce retained earnings, but you can no longer increase the expense. So you would reduce retained earnings. So I'm just taking a few minutes here to kind of explain why we deal with retained earnings, because you're going to see this is the account that we change in year two when, you know, the books are already closed. So we can go back and fix the expenses or the revenues. So you're going to see this repeatedly as I'm going over these examples. Now, is this a counterbalancing error? Let's assume we did not, we did not, we did not even figure out that we made an error. Would this, would this error fix itself? And the answer is yes. Think about it. We had an X1, an X1, an X1, we had 2,900 of supplies. That's fine. It's a, it's a, it should have been 1,000. We missed it. We did not discover the error in the current year. And during year two, we did not discover it as well, even after the books were closed. What do you think is going to happen to those 2,900 of supplies in year two? Most likely in year two, those will be expense. So the assumption is, what What assumption am I making? The assumption is at some point in year two, eventually we're going to go back and at some point and count the supplies and we're going to see that we no longer have the supplies. So we're going to expense them. So, so, so if we did not discover the, if we did not discover it, Supplies would reverse itself, assuming that we also did not count the supplies in year two. But assuming we count the supplies in year two and we expense it, basically it's counterbalancing. The expense will be recorded in year two. It will be recorded in the wrong period. Nevertheless, the supplies expense will be fixed. It will be fixed. But the expense will be in the, in the wrong period. But the effect to retained earning is the same. So it's a counterbalancing error. And I, ho I hope you can see this. Because if you did not fix it, Hope, we hope that someone counted supplies in year two and basically expensed the necessary, the proper amount, and by doing so, fixed year one as well. Let's take a look at this example. Accrued salaries and wages should be 3,500. If we look at accrued salaries and wages, they are 1,500. And let's assume we discover the error before the books are closed. Well, what does that mean? It means we need to add 2,000 to our accrued salaries and wages. Well, when we accrued salaries and wages, we're gonna debit an expense for that amount and credit accrued salaries and wages. Therefore, we fix this problem. If the books were already closed and we discovered the error, we can no longer fix the expense. What we do is we debit retained earning using the same logic, the same concept that I talked about in the prior session, because you cannot, you can no longer book salaries and wages expense by reducing retained earnings after the books are closed, 
you fix the error. Now, let's assume you did not discover the error even in year X2. Would the error fix itself? And the answer is yes. Think about it. If you owe your employees an additional $2,000 and you did not record the expense in the proper period, which it should, it should have been in year one, but you pay them in year two. When you pay them in year two, you are going to expense it. Therefore, it's, this is a counterbalancing error. So if you did not discover it and you paid the employee by the end of the year, you would have an additional 2,000 of expenses, thus fixing the error, fixing retained earnings, because by including an additional 2,000, you technically reduce your retained earning. However, the 2,000 of expense was recorded in year two. So if you want to show comparative financial statements, you have to go back and put the 2,000 in year one if you want to show comparative financial statements. Let's take a look at this example. Accrued interest on investment amounts to 5,000. If we look at our trial balance, interest receivable is 4,000. Well, we have to add 1,000 here. Well, what do we do? We debit interest receivable for 1,000, credit interest revenue for 1,000. Now, if the books are already closed and we discover the error, what we can do is, and the error has not been corrected, we debit interest receivable for 1,000. We can no longer go to revenue. We can no longer increase revenue. What are we going to increase? What do revenue eventually increase? Retained earnings. Therefore, we credit retained earnings. Is this a counterbalancing error? And the answer is yes. If you did not do anything, what's going to happen? At some point, you're going to open your bank statement, look at your bond investments, and you're going to see you earned an additional 1000 So you will debit cash, credit interest revenue. And by crediting interest revenue, what did you do? You either increase revenue and as a result you increase retained earnings so basically it will counterbalance itself it, it's another one that counterbalance itself because eventually you're going to get that revenue let's take a look at this entry the inexpired portion of insurance policies total sixty thousand. the unexpired portion well prepaid insurance shows 90. well we should not have 90 we should have 60. what do we have to do we have to reduce prepaid by 30. Well, we're going to reduce prepaid, we're going to expense it. So we're going to expense insurance expense 30, credit prepaid 30 to reduce it by 30. If the books are already closed, and we discover the error, and the error has not been corrected by itself, it's, it was not counterbalancing, we're going to debit retained earning because we can no longer debit an expense if the books are closed, we're in a different period, and credit prepaid expense. Now, with this would this entry correct itself? The assumption is most likely yes. If in year two, whoever taking care of prepaid insurance, they will find out we should reduce it an additional 30,000. They would reduce it, they will expense it and retain, retained earning will be proper. However, again, if you're showing competitive financial statements, you have to go back to year one and reduce prepaid insurance and increase, increase insurance expense if you are publishing the financial statements. Again, this error is counterbalancing. Let's look at this error. 30,000 was received on January 1st, X1 for the rent of a building for both X1 and X2. The entire amount was credited to rental income. Well, it's for two years and we credited the whole amount to rental income. What do we have to do? We have to take out half of it from rental income. We have to take half of it from rental income. Why? Because half of it don't belong in X1. So therefore, what we do is we, if, the, if we discover this error, before the end of X1, we debit rental income, credit unearned revenue, and we fix the error because we have to put 15,000 in unearned revenue. It should, it's, it's not supposed to be an income as of X1, and we fixed it. If, if, if the books were closed for X1 and the error did not counterbalance, which is, um, you already told you it's a counterbalancing error, what do we have to do? We have to debit retained earnings because we have to reduce income as a result, we cannot reduce rental income. We have to reduce retained earnings and credit unearned rent revenue, which is the balance sheet account. Would this entry fix itself? Is this entry counterbalancing? And absolutely, yes. If you did not do anything, and by the end of X2, by the end of X2, you would have two years worth of rental revenue of 30,000 and retained earnings will be correct because over a two year period, you would have earned 30,000, which what you did at the beginning. But the problem would be the amount are in the different period. So the whole amount is an X1 and not an X2. Let's take a look at this entry. Depreciation for the year was erroneously recorded as 10,000 rather than the correct amount of 40,000. 
hold on a second we record the 10 the amount should be 40 what do we have to do if we if we find find out about the error well debit depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation in that particular year x1 if the books are closed what do we have to do well we can we can no longer debit depreciation expense but we want the effect of that we debit retained earnings of 30000 credit accumulated depreciation by 30000 thus fixing the error would this error fix itself most likely not why because depreciation expense does not counterbalance there's no effect at the end of the year if you made an error you're going to discover it it's going to reverse itself so this will be a non a non counterbalancing example because you have to go in there and you, you made an error and you did the computation it's not going to correct itself especially if you're if already uh, if you already made the error and not aware of the mistake therefore you're not going to correct it therefore this doesn't counterbalance it doesn't counterbalance by itself because in the prior in the prior examples either the cash was involved or the receivable was involved therefore it fixed itself this one is does not counterbalance another example of it is bad debt expense it's it's a number that you have to compute yourself therefore it doesn't counter balance what should you do now to learn more about this go to farhatlectures.com to work additional mcqs and true false questions exercises that's going to help you solidify your knowledge about this topic don't shortchange yourself accounting is important your professional certification is important study hard good luck and of course stay safe